Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. By the Middle Oligocene, the influx of taxa arriving from Asia had almost entirely replaced the native Paleogene European forms. Fossil deposits in the region show a high degree of similarity to those of temporally equivalent sites in Asia, with only a few native groups holding their own. While the eastern reaches of Europe possessed a more open savanna type ecosystem, Western Europe was more heavily forested during the Middle Oligocene. The climate was warm and somewhat dry, with the patchwork of broadleaf forests intermixed with grassland covering Spain, France and Italy during this time. Overall, Europe's climate was significantly warmer than today, being more comparable to northern India. This assertion can be qualified due to the presence of a diversity of European squamates and crocodilians found here, which is far greater than during the Holocene. Indeed, crocodilians are extinct in modern Europe on Alter Earth, as on our world, but alligatorids in particular are well represented here from the Paleogene. Additional animal groups found in Oligocene Europe also suggest a warm, dry savanna environment, including many individual genera shared in common with sites in Kazakhstan and Mongolia. Perhaps the site which best demonstrates this is the Quercy Phosphorites formation of southern France. Ranging in age from the late Eocene to the early Miocene, a rich array of fossils have been recovered from numerous sites in the formation. However, we'll be focusing on just one of these, the Middle Oligocene M24 site. Once a coastal ecosystem consisting of slow-moving rivers and warm open woodland, Site M24 has revealed a wealth of fossil animals, including small lizards, snakes and forest-dwelling birds which are rarely preserved elsewhere. Set down in phosphate-laden clay deposits, many specimens of smaller tetrapods are fully articulated and almost complete, giving us a valuable insight into their life appearance. A perfect example of this trend is the Enantiornithine myogracculoides, one of the rarer fossil finds at the site. With a wingspan of 50 centimetres or more, it was rather large for a European Oligocene Enantiornithine, with most other genera being small, nimble insectivores. The genus was a member of the family Eugraculidae, a group of arboreal forest-dwelling avians that were once commonplace across Eurasia and North America during the Eocene. The oldest confirmed member of the group was Sawat Chornis from the early Eocene Green River Formation of Wyoming. These were derived opposite birds, possessing true toothless beaks and were capable flyers over short distances, although they still retained clawed wings. Their feet were also strongly adapted for perching, with a zygodactyl toe arrangement useful for gripping tree branches while scouting out nearby fruit-bearing trees. In form, these birds were somewhat like the trogons of our world, and were adapted for similar frugivorous and insectivorous niches. During the Oligocene, these birds became extinct in North America, and their diversity declined somewhat in northern Eurasia. In Europe, they persisted until the end of the Oligocene, when it is presumed that a drying climatic change eliminated the humid forests on which these birds relied. Ironically, by the Middle Miocene, the humid forests would return, but by that time the Eugraculids were long gone. In modern times, these birds can still be found in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, where they retain a fairly high degree of diversity. A single genus of Pangaliform was also present at the site, Marbotornis. This was a large, semi-arboreal bird reminiscent of a curassow with pheasant-like traits. The genus was the oldest and most basal member of the modern family Fonghuangidae. These beautiful, elaborately plumed animals are native only to East and Southeast Asia by the Holocene, where they inhabit subtropical and tropical forests. However, it seems that the group got its start in the Oligocene of Europe before dying out there in the Middle Miocene. This, as well as other impressions in the fossil record, are indicative of the loss of Europe's humid forests during the later Miocene. Marbotornis was the largest tree-dwelling bird at Quercy, roughly the size of the guans from our world, with a wingspan of up to 80 centimetres and weighing about a kilogram. Based on the structure of the bill, this bird was an omnivore with a diet consisting mainly of fruits and seeds, but supplemented with insects and small vertebrates. The legs were relatively elongated, and the strong curved pedal claws suggest a decent climbing and grasping ability. Modern Feng Huangids are strongly sexually dimorphic animals, 
with males being significantly larger and more colourful than the females. It is assumed that Marbotornis grandis would have been similar, but we are not absolutely sure of this due to a lack of preserved feather impressions for the genus. The wings were short and stubby for the size of the animal, suggesting fairly weak flying ability. Birds such as these would have to watch out for arboreal predators, including the adaptable Aserictid metatherian Vasiliictis, a long-bodied hypercarnivorous weasel-like animal with a very wide range, with remains found in a broad arc across Eurasia that includes France, Germany, Russia and Mongolia. It was able to hunt both on the ground and in the trees, feeding on small mammals, lizards and the eggs of dinosaurs, both avian and non-avian. In addition, Boeoidian snakes were quite common in the warm open forests of Oligocene Europe, particularly the Viridiopythonids. These relatively large snakes were ambush hunting constrictors measuring up to 2 meters long and fed on small mammals, birds, lizards and other snakes. The genus Tarnophis was on the smaller end of the size spectrum, at only 1.2 meters, and was an arboreal predator, being somewhat analogous to the tree boas of our world. These snakes went on to great success in the Miocene of Europe, but began to decline once the regions they called home began to change to dry open savannah by the end of the period. By the Holocene, these arboreal animals can still be found in tropical forest ecosystems in Central and Western Africa. Most living forms are cryptically coloured, with either greenish or brownish scales, with lighter horizontal patterns running along the body, so it is likely that the extinct Tarnophis was similar. A squamate lineage that was endemic to Europe, indeed their first appearance is at Quercy, were the Draco Lacertines, a subfamily within the similarly European Euro Lacertidae. These were superficially monitor lizard like carnivores. True Varanoids once inhabited Europe during the Paleocene, although they seem to have died out at some point during the Eocene for reasons that are poorly understood. The semi-aquatic Pachyvaranids dwelt in and around the estuaries and river mouths of southern Europe, but did not venture further inland into terrestrial ecosystems. In their absence, the endemic Draco Lacertines emerged during at least the Middle Oligocene, and quite probably earlier if recent phylogenetic studies are to be believed. These were large, predatory Lacertiform lizards, with finely serrated teeth and powerful robust skulls. Capable both on the ground and in the trees, animals such as the 75 cm long Caducosaurus were hunters of small lizards, mammals, frogs and hatchling dinosaurs. It is also likely that these lizards would feed on the eggs themselves if the hatchlings and juveniles were absent. This was a successful lineage, remaining in southern Europe and Turkey until the Holocene, with a small window of absence during the glacial periods of the Pleistocene. The lizards would retreat into the Levant and Near East with the advance of the ice sheets, re-entering Europe during the warmer interglacials. The Hemiplacentalians are an animal group that have no close relatives from the Holocene of our world, being a sister lineage to true placentals, from which they diverged approximately 75 million years ago. The earliest members were two closely related genera from the Maastrichtian of North America, Purgatorius and Protungulatum. In our timeline, these animals produced no descendants and had died out by the early Paleocene. On Alter Earth, however, they continued to diversify and gave rise to a successful line of mostly arboreal omnivores. Beginning as small arboreal generalists similar to tree shrews, they quickly diversified into niches held by raccoons, civets and coates on our world. During the Paleocene and Eocene, these animals expanded their range into Asia, a region in which they still thrive today. Their generalised dentition and flexible body plans enabled hemiplacentals to colonise all sorts of environments, from tropical rainforests to deserts. The small basal forms died out at the end of the Eocene in North America, and had vanished from Asia by the late Miocene. However, larger derived forms, such as the Melilestids, continued to spread westwards, entering Europe during the Oligocene. Ictisinus was an example of this group, being a semi-arboreal omnivore up to 90 centimetres long, and was the largest mammal in its fossil locality. About the size of an Asiatic palm civet, the males possessed enlarged canines used in territorial displays and in confrontations with other males. 
Its diet would have consisted of fruit, honey, eggs, and small vertebrates. Like all hemiplacentals, Ictisinus females possessed a small and primitive placenta, allowing for the birth of relatively more developed young than metatherians, albeit still poorly developed in the eyes of true placentals such as human beings. Notable as being the first of their kind in Europe were the placental tylocericoids. First appearing in North America during the Eocene, these small shrew and hedgehog-like animals were the first wave of placental mammal diversification during the Oligocene. Their range encompassed the entirety of Eurasia and North America, being among the most common of all mammals represented. Three genera were present at Site M24, with Avenantotherium being the largest and rarest. At 40 cm long, Avenantotherium gravum was roughly equivalent to a European hedgehog in body size, but with a much longer tail. It likely did not possess a spiky coat, and the structure of its skull indicates the presence of a mobile proboscis like that of a sengi or selenodon. Probably nocturnal, the animal would have had a generalist diet, although mainly feeding on invertebrates. Tylocericoid such as this went on to outcompete and replace Europe's indigenous gyps and nyctopids, which occupied similar niches there during the preceding Eocene period. By the end of the Oligocene, the last of these non-placentals, the genus Pepitogale, vanished from Spain and Italy. Non-avian dinosaurs were less common at M24, and most that have been found there were of Asian origin. Indeed, many of the same genera were found across the broad expanse of the titanosaur steppe biome that covered much of Eurasia. There were a few exceptions, however, such as Ebro Titan, a member of the European derived titanosaur family Ampelosauridae. This heavily armoured browsing herbivore was the largest terrestrial animal present in Oligocene Western Europe at up to 18 metres long. At least three species spanned the period, whose remains have been recovered from France, Spain and Germany. A significant recent arrival from Asia was the massive robust Brontavid oviraptorosaur Megalornithosaurus, known from a single but remarkably complete specimen. Found only in Western Europe, this formidable omnivore inhabited a niche somewhat comparable to bears or to the extinct Dromornithids of Australia, with a proportionately large skull and heavy beak. The animal likely fed on a mixture of tough vegetation, foliage, rotting wood, fruit and small animals. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be examining the extinct proboscidean Dinotherium and its lesser known relatives. See you again soon. Cheerio.